Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1448. Hey, if you want to download this Excel file so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, this video really should be a duel because Mr. Excel already did a great solution using a helper column here. Now, below the video, I left a comment of a single cell formula that would do it also. Now, here's the setup. We have trucks arriving, and this is the date. We need four different types of conditional formatting down this column. Green cells mean there's no date, meaning we have no date entered. And days elapsed is less than two days. Now, I'm shooting this on July 3rd, so 7-3. So this definitely would not be green because the elapsed days comparing 7-3 to 6-30 is not less than 2. Our next color, yellow, that means there'd be no date in the cell, and days elapsed is exactly equal to 2. So that wouldn't apply either here. Red means there's no date in the cell, and elapsed days are greater than 2. That's the color that should be here. And finally, blue is when someone's entered a truck it's been unloaded. Now, one thing about conditional formatting is that if we have four items, we really don't have to do the fourth one because we can leave it as the default. So if I highlight all of these cells, go up to the fill, I'm just going to put in a green. Then we'll build these conditions on top. And if any of them apply, it will override the cell color. Now, the first one is. Anytime we enter a date, we need it to turn blue. So I'm going to highlight the column. And over in the Home ribbon tab, there's our conditional format. And now I'm going to use formulas for all of these. So I go down to New Rule, or I can use the keyboard, Alt-HLN, to open this up. Now I could double click, use a formula to determine which cells to format, or I can hit Page Down. Then I take my cursor and click in Format Values, where this formula is true, or I simply hit Tab. I'm going to type equals. And since dates are numbers, I'm going to say is number, open parentheses. Now when I click on this cell in Conditional Formatting dialog box, it comes up as absolute. I'm going to hit the F4 key one, two, three times, so that now it's a relative cell reference. Close parentheses, and that formula will be copied down in memory behind the scenes. So each cell will see this relative cell reference, and it will ask the question, are you a number? In this case, it will be true, so blue will be applied. Here, it will come out false, so blue will not be applied. Format, fill, and I'm going to select something like that. Blue, click OK, click OK. So if I come here and type today's date, there, it is turning blue. Now, for our next two conditional formattings, we always need to have each cell think about what today is. And so today is 7-3. I need to take 7-3 and subtract that date. And we could do that off to the side equals today. This function will always deliver today's date minus, and then I'm going to click up on a1. Now, for this first example, and if we were just using this one template and not trying to copy the template or copy the conditional formatting, then I can simply hit the F4 key. And that locks it. So as I copy down, it will always give me the difference. And now I need to, in our case, since we're doing yellow, I'm going to hard code this in equals 2. Now, if this 2 could ever change, then I would put it in a cell with a label. But for this particular example, Mr. Excel was doing 2, wasn't going to change. So now I can Control Enter and copy it down. And of course, it's going to be false all the way down. Now we'll use that same formula for both yellow and red. But the red one will be, are you greater than 2? So now if I Control Enter, I get trues all the way down. So when we put those two formulas into the conditional formatting dialog box, Yellow and red will be available, but only red will show. I'm going to hit F2 and copy this just so I can paste it. Control C, Escape, Delete. Now I highlight Alt H L N, Page Down, Tab, Control V. The first one I'm going to say is equals to format. 
yellow, click OK, click OK. Alt H L N, page down tab, control V, and that's the one for red. Format, red, maybe I'll do font color. White, click OK, click OK. So now that is working. Now we need to adjust this. So now we can go back up to conditional formatting and manage rules, or the old keyboard from way back, which is faster than the newer one, Alt O D. I want to put the blue one on top. So I'm going to come here and up, up, and there we go. That's the order in which we want. And we want to be sure and come over and click Stop If True. Stop If True. And those, well, once it gets applied, it won't let these other ones apply. Now I click OK, and there we go. Now let's test this. right? So if it is not the 30th of June, let's 7-1. Yes, it should be yellow because it's exactly equal to 2. If I give it the second, now it is less than 2, it's 1. If I control Z, Z, so all three colors are working. Now here's the real trouble. If you try and either copy the entire template like Mr. Excel did, or just copy the formatting, I can actually come up to the Format Painter and click there. Whoops, I should have double clicked. So you ready? Double click. So I'm going to click there and there. How come it's not working? If we open up any one of these sets of formulas, Alt-O-D, and I'm going to double click this one, we can see it's still looking at A1 locked up here. Now, Mr. Excel did a helper formula here and then hid the column. Here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to change that A1 cell reference that's actually in every single formula for all of our conditional formatting, I'd like to change it to a cell reference that would automatically, as I copy down, know to look to A1. But when I copied it to the side, now it knows to look at D1. And not only that, when I get down to row 20, it should no longer be looking at A1. It should be looking at A18. Now, the way we can do something like that is by using the offset function. Now think about this. Right here for offset, offset would need to know to jump up two rows, which means please subtract two rows and subtract one column. And that would give me cell A1. Over here, it needs the same thing. Subtract two rows, subtract a column. But guess what? Here. How about right here? It's still subtracting one column. But now it needs to subtract 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 rows. Not only that, but as we copy down when it gets down to here, even though right here we're subtracting 15 rows to get back up to cell A1, when we copy the formula down right here, it should not be 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. It should be back to minus 2 rows. All right, we're going to use the offset, but it's the number incrementing part that's going to be hard. All right, almost always when we're doing number incrementing formulas, inside at the heart of the formula is either rows when you're copying down across the rows and you want something to change, or columns, which we'll see in a second. Now I'm sitting in G3, so I type not G3 because actually the formula in the conditional formatting dialog box is going to start right there in B3, so I'm going to type B dollar sign three to lock the row, colon B3, close parentheses. Now this is an expandable range. That three is not locked, so it will change to four, five, six, and so on. Rows simply counts how many rows there are in a range. I'm going to control enter, copy it to the side, and copy it down a bunch. Now in any particular cell, if you hit F2, you could see, sure enough, three to 11, there's nine rows. Now what we really want is in this block right here, we want minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, and so on all the way down here. And then when it gets down to this row, it's got to start over at minus 2. Anytime you have a pattern of numbers that are then going to repeat, we can use the mod function. Now the mod function gives you the remainder after division. one divided by 17. Well, there is no whole number. There's just a remainder 1. 2 divided by 17. Well, the remainder would be 2. Now, 17 is because that's how 
tall that range is. So I click on the top cell, F2, and then use the mod function tab. Now, instead of 1, I don't want a 1 here. I want 0. So I'm going to subtract 1. And now I'm simply going to put the denominator 17. And mod will know to take that number and give us the remainder. Close parentheses, Control Enter, copy it to the side, and then double click and send it down. That is amazing. Look at that. We get a number incrementer, and then it starts over exactly in the right place. Now, F2 at the top, we really need to subtract rows, not add. So I'm going to put a minus sign in front of the mod, Control Enter to populate this edited formula through the entire highlighted range. Still not quite what we want, but I think if we subtract 2 from this, it'll work just fine. F2, and then at the end, minus 2, Control-Enter to populate that all the way through. Look at that. Minus 2 all the way down, down, and then it starts over. All this is going to do is as we copy to the side, offset will always know for the row to go minus 2 up. Down in this row, it'll know to go minus 8, and so on. Now I'm going to copy this, just that little bit right there, Control-C-C -C to open up the clipboard. I want to collect the row incrementer and then the column incrementer. Now if this didn't open on the first try, you have to go to Home, Clipboard, and Launcher. And then down in Options, you have to check Press C twice to open Clipboard. All right, now the next number incrementer well, you know, when I started off doing this video, I was thinking, oh, I was going to do columns. But no, let's look at this. Any single cell in any one of these templates only has to jump back one column. So minus 1 as a hard-coded value will work. Now, our next step is to test the offset function. We'll use how many rows to jump back, and we'll hard-code in minus 1. And when we do that, we should be seeing the proper date as we copy through our range over here. So you ready? Equals offset. Now offset always needs a starting position, and then you tell it how many rows to move and columns to move from that reference starting position. Now because the formula is always going to start with B3 in this first template, it's a relative cell reference. And really, that's the magic part of this, right? Because It'll copy down here, and as we copy it anywhere in any one of these templates, it'll always know to start in the first cell and copy down, comma. Now the rows, that's going to be our mods incrementer, comma, and then number of columns to go back. We simply hard code minus 1 in, close parentheses, Control Enter, copy it over. Double click and send it down, Control-1, just to see the date. Click on Date, click OK. Now, these columns don't matter here. But notice, wow, that's working perfectly. When we copy it over here, it'll totally be looking at the seven ones there. And when we copy down, boom, all of these cells will be looking at 7, 2. Now, I'm going to click on the top cell, F2, and that is the formula element that's going to replace that absolute A1 cell reference. Control-C in Edit Mode, Escape. I'm going to highlight. And now I need to edit. So I go to Home, Conditional Format, Manage Rules, or I can use the keyboard Alt-O-D. There it is, that A1. Double click to edit that. I very carefully highlight the A1 and Control-V, because that was the last thing I copied. Click OK. Double click to open this up. Highlight that, Control-V. Click OK. Click OK. Now, we better test it here before we start copying it somewhere else. I'm going to change this to 7 slash 1. Instantly, that updates. These ones are still linked through cell A1. 2 better give us green, and sure enough. Now I'm going to Control-ZZ and highlight these formulas in the Conditional Formatting dialog box. Right click. And on the Mini Toolbar, I'm going to double click the Format Painter. Double click. Very carefully, I click in the top cell. Click, 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 and Escape to turn that off. And sure enough, it looks like it's working. If I come here and put a date. That turned blue. If I test this up here and change this to 2, it better turn green. 
change this to 6 slash 30, and it is working. Wow, so that was a little fun with a number increment or an offset to substitute a cell reference in conditional formatting. So we could either copy the template or the conditional formatting over to the side or down below. Now, because we had that row number incrementer, we would have to have this size tall template and then go down a row and paste the new template. All right, that was a little fun with offset function used with conditional formatting. Thanks to Mr. Excel for his video. It's awesome to be part of an online Excel team. We'll see you next video.